Hello, Mr. Gun. Yo. Yo, dude. How you doing? What's up, bud? Oh, yeah. Oh, Not much. Just getting ready for that coaching lesson. Um. So, really quick, before we jump into it, refresh me again as to uh, what league you're in and also uh, what matchup you want to focus on. So I want to look at uh, ZVT, and I was in silver for some of these um, replays, but I ended up hitting gold two recently. Okay. But I still wanted to look at some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, easy peasy, dude. Let's do it. So all you get, all you got to do is uh, get on US West or just or the North American server and. Uh, Go to the Grandmaster list, and if you don't know how to do it, I can show you. Um, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, all right, so what you do, all you do is you um, click your portrait in top right. And if you want a visual, you can just check my stream out for a second. I'll do it too. Okay. Just portrait in top right, left click it. It'll open up a new window. And then ladders in the middle left, click it. And then we're in the same exact spot, a Grandmaster button will be there. Click that. And then you just scroll down to my rank, which currently is rank... 48 and then just right click my name and send me a message there you go dude nailed it cool all right and then just uh grab a replay whatever one you want to do and then um uh, host it up and hit uh when you host it though hit watch with others and you can invite me to it okay do i invite to party uh, you don't, well, you, here, yeah, we can, we can do that. How does it work? Uh, so like when you're in the replay, uh, just to make sure, I hope you have replays of this patch. If you don't, it's okay. We can do it a different way, but, uh, okay. just go to your replays and then pick whatever one you want to do. And then at the bottom, yep. there's a, just a watch with others button. Just click that. So it'll host it for both of us and not just by yourself. Nice. Okay, good. So if, if it works, it means it's from this patch. If it's from a previous patch, it doesn't let us do it because you have to go offline to watch it. Uh. All right. And then just make me uh, in the lobby right now. Uh, right click my name and just make me lobby host. All right. Okay. Sick, dude. All right. We're just cranking through this right now. Just to let you know that. Like Sometimes this takes three times as long as it just did. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're nailing this right now, dude. Sweet. All right. So ZVT, uh, gold level. Uh, and feel free, uh, don't mind interrupting me at all. If I'm in the middle of saying something and you have a thought, you're more than welcome yeah, to inter sure. interrupt me and just say whatever you want. Yeah. So for this one, I lost to Marauders. And like I felt like my macro was good here. But um, they just shredded through Hydra Roach. I felt like. Yeah. Uh, we'll... We'll definitely see what's going on. Uh, Marauders in general are pretty pretty decent to good against a Roach. Hydras are really good, though. Um, but uh, the biggest thing I always tell a lot of people, though, is it's not about the composition. It's more about your... Just everything you're doing. Like, it's your macro. And I'm going right. to see... How you, I know you say it's good, but I'm definitely going to be looking at it to see how it's going. Oh, I'm sure it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, been, I've been practicing the bronze to GM... I don't know. I uh, just picked up the game like a month ago or so. Nice, dude. So, really was a fan of the Bronze GM and been kind of just trying to use that as my Bible. Yeah, it it definitely will help you understand the game and get it, like you'll get like a good foundation with it. That'll help you learn everything else a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, but so far your build's fine. Um, I have no real like complaints about it. You like, I would say it's very minor. But there's been a couple of times where you've had a larva sitting there for maybe like three seconds longer than it could have been there. But that's super minor because you never once okay. la you never once like larva capped. That's the big one. Okay. Uh, right. If you ever larva capped, then you're not generating larva anymore, which means you're just losing larva that you'll never get back. Uh, you have to wait for new ones, basically. So so far, right. you're, so far, it's, it's not been bad. Um, I will say though, here's a a little bit of something that you can do as a mm -hmm. A little bit of a deviation uh, if okay. you're if you're if, if you're looking to like upgrade the build a bit so if okay. you if you see a Terran player with the overload like, like you just did I love that you scouted his natural 
But you see that this yeah. guy has gone for a command center early. He's he's already it's already done. He's already expanded. Yeah. You're 100 percent more than welcome to take a third base very quickly this game. Even if you're not going to be able to defend it right away, because you're not going to have your roaches yet for the roach timing that we normally do, and you're going to wall your natural kind of, uh, which right, is what right, I tell right. you every game. You can still take that third if your opponent takes a third like this, because Terran okay. is only really going to harass that third uh, if they expand early with either Hellions or um, uh, at, the scariest thing would be like a Banshee, uh, because by the time your roaches yeah. come out, you would be able to defend Marines anyways. Unless he was the kind of guy that did something random, like walk five marines across the map that don't have any upgrades, which is super weird. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, basically, what I'm trying to say is is you can totally make queens out of both hatcheries, spend all your larvae, and the second you have 300 minerals, just take a third base in this kind of a situation. Okay. So don't fully saturate the second, go for the third, and then saturate. You spend all your money that you can on drones, but you will have, you can delay your wall a little bit. And instead of making the wall okay. as fast, okay. you can make the third and then make the wall. Uh, one thing that kind of went poor for you this game as well is your queen at your natural never built when your queen and your main did, so you're you're already like one inject behind, which will throw right. you off a little bit. And now your queen and your main is actually coming down to your natural, so now you're you're missing injects again. I guess you're putting a tumor down, but I don't. It's fine if you want to put a tumor down. It's okay, but this queen needs to go back immediately and inject. I'm okay with making a tumor though. Yeah, when I realized I missed the queen, I was like, I need to start spreading creep. Yeah. So, I'm going to pause it again really right here really quick. Uh, mm -hmm. So, your drone count right now is about to explode a little bit because you have eight drones of production. But if we look at what he's got right now, he's going to have 30 to 31 currently, which is going to turn into 30 to 39. Um, it's not necessarily bad for you. But the only reason that it's going to start kind of falling off is because uh, I would say already in this game, you've, you've guaranteed already missed two injects worth of drones, uh, which could, mm -hmm. could mean instead of being at 39, you'd be at 45. But um, okay. you're also, as time goes on, your queen is currently at 41 energy, and it should actually only be at uh, like 16 right now because it should have already injected the main again. So the second it hits, mm -hmm. the second it hits 50, that's another inject you will have missed. So now it's nine right. larva. You're now out again. Um, so just just be more uh, active with your queens on your hatcheries, basically. Just make sure make sure that's like a priority. Larva is okay. always the biggest priority for Zerg. It's about not letting it cap and getting as much of it as fast as you can constantly with your queens and stuff. It's super important. And then, um, looking at where we're at now, uh, your layer has been done for a long time now, and your, uh -huh. uh, your upgrades haven't started at all, and you have resources to do it. I would say just, uh, focus, really, uh, I, I like your creep sword, though, that's something that is going on, that's good. But every time when you're kind of chilling, and you're not really doing much, a great thing that you should be doing is kind of just, like, rotate the camera, like, up and down your base. If you don't, especially if you don't use base camera hockeys, it's totally fine to do this. Just be like, all right, look at my natural. Just look for like the, like the numbers above the hatchery and above the gas and be like, okay, we're good. It's, it's currently 18 out of 16. We can grab two. Those will go somewhere else. But we're, otherwise, we're good. Go to the main. We're, uh, you know, you're still missing the gas here, but it's, it's okay so far. Normally, I don't ever take my gas until I start making drones again after the roach phase. But your main overall looks good. But one thing you're going to look at in your main, though, is it, when you go back up here, is you're going to be like, all right, my layer's done. Or you can, or if it's not done yet, you're going to keep tabs on it and be like, all right, my layer is going to be done soon. So that's something that's like a mental note for you to be like, all right, I need to, the second that's done, I need to make sure I make my upgrades. Because every second that goes by, you're missing a window to actually do a timing if you're going to do a timing. And if we back it up really quick, I just want to look and show you. Uh, right... <laughs> right now, your layer just finished at 3 minutes and 41 seconds. And it, and at this time, we do not have a Roach Warren, and we do not have an Evo Chamber. Um, the best way to kind of make this all flow really well is when you start your hatchery, the next... or when, Sorry, when you start your layer, the next money you have always should be dedicated to making sure you spend your larva as quick as you can, 
but then the second you have 150 minerals, immediately make a Roach Warren. A Roach Warren is, okay. is it's very important. You can delay your Evo Chambers a bit, but the Roach Warren is super important because you don't want to have a layer super fast for no reason at all. You want to be able to do something with it. Otherwise, what was the point of rushing it? Because rushing the layer does slow your economy down. Um, right, right. Like, we'll, we'll, so we're gonna look. At, we're gonna pay attention to the clock right now. It's three forty-one, and we'll see. You actually make your roach one right now at three. You, you started it. It would took a few seconds to get behind the mineral line and build it, but at three forty-five, your roach one starts, and now thirty-nine seconds later, it's going to finish, which then could start the upgrade. So we we already have this weird position in the build here. Where we could have built a rich one right as we like kind of started our layer, but instead we waited. So now it's already at the at the bare minimum, it's already going to be 39 seconds delayed for the overall timing. And if we fast forward again, 3:41 was the timing that we had a layer here. Um, it went a little tiny bit too far forward. Uh, and now we have the rich one finishing at 4:24. So 39 seconds was already what we had before. And now 424 is going to be the next part. We'll look and see when the upgrade starts from 424. And we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. Okay, the upgrade is now starting at like 506. So it's almost like 50 seconds plus 39 seconds delayed. from the that, Which right. is like, you're like a minute and a half behind basically in your timing. And a minute and a half is so much time to make a lot of stuff. Which means that your opponent will have realistically like that's why you could be like maybe he has a ton of marauders maybe he has like he could have like three tanks instead of one or something like that if he was going for tanks or you know something yeah. it's, just, it's just a lot of time that it, your opponent has to work with and the reason why this is um why i'm kind of like harping on this and getting and saying it needs to be faster is because if we look at your income right now and your your overall bank you have had enough to do it it's just it, it, i feel like you might be focusing a little bit too hard of your camera and your attention on your creep when it is important, it's super important to do it, but every time you're not spreading creep, you have about like a 10 second window of time or like an eight second window of time where you should just literally be like, go to my third, go to my natural, go to my main. Or when you inject, just take an extra second. This is actually even better because I went in the bronze GM where I used to tell people inject, 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 creep, 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 inject, 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 creep, 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 creep. And I just like a rotate, it's like a pattern. you like, you just get used to injecting and creeping simultaneously. But what you could do to improve that, if you're kind of struggling with like hitting the timings correctly and stuff, is at first it'll be kind of slow for you. But every time you inject, take a second and look at the base when you inject it and go, all right, saturation's good, tech is good, build is looking good, go to the natural. Same exact thing, saturation's good, tech is looking good. Just make sure you're focusing on that really hard up to the point when you're, when you're here. Because this build doesn't really have a lot going on after Roach Hydra. It's pretty basic after that. It's like literally the build is like make make sure you have drones running and make Roach Hydra, make Roach Hydra, make Hydra, make Roach. It's just repeat. It repeats itself a lot at that point once you right. once you have it set up. So just take a little bit more time to make sure everything's flowing and it's hitting the timings you need to be hitting, basically. Um, and it, I think it'll help you out a lot up to this point. Any questions so far? I know I'm talking kind of fast. I don't want to go crazy here, but no, no, no. It's good. It's good. Okay. Uh, but yeah, your creep is looking great. That's it for gold. Your creep is amazing. Um, but yeah, just uh, for sure, uh, take a little bit more time to look at your base and make sure that's all flowing pretty good. And then the other thing too is your gas. Um, every drone counts. I'm gonna pause it one more time and just say this real quick. Try your best uh -huh. to uh, every time you make a hatchery. Try your best to have a queen get made at the same time you make a hatchery. And what you want to do is you want to send a queen over to that hatchery. So a queen is going to arrive as the hatchery is done. Or the queen can arrive a little early. It doesn't matter. To but inject. You, exactly, yeah. You have a queen there as the hatchery finishes. So you don't miss out on injects. And then don't take your gas at your third. Your, your gas and your main and your natural were fine. But your gas... I kind of took it here because I was, I was supply blocked. Okay. Uh, that's a fair call. But um, in general, I guess don't supply block. Uh, try your best not to supply block, and just yeah, j just yeah. keep it keep in mind for the gas timings. You want to do your first gas at like the like 17, 18, 17, 17, 17, 17, whatever. Just like your early gas, like you did. Your natural gas should go down when your natural itself is fully saturated. 
or has like at least 10 drones. Um, but I would, I would honestly say probably more towards like 16. And then your third gas should not go down until your mineral line at your third has 16. Because this build opens with roaches. And if you take gas super quick, like if you were to like, let's say saturate the gas right now, you're going to have a problem where you're, you're going to have like 800 gas and like 100 minerals. And the only way to make it work is if you're going mass ravagers, which you're not, you're going for roach hydra. So it just kind of like, it would inefficiently mess your build up basically. Okay. Um, another thing um, that I would recommend doing is I like that you made an overseer, but I would love it if you dropped like a changeling maybe. Um, and you just, you don't really have to walk into his base with it, but instead maybe you go scout his third base with it, his like other third. Uh, that way you just, oh, wait, are you doing it? Hold on. Did you just read my mind from the past? Yeah, yeah, I was doing that at certain points. It stopped. I didn't scout the third though. <laughs> yeah, you should totally, you should totally scout the third only because, um, right now you're playing a little bit blind and if your opponent, um, was being way too greedy and you're, let's say, making a bunch of roaches here and you don't realize he's being greedy, you could get super punished for that. It'll go really bad for you. Uh, but yeah, like he, having having an idea, like just the fact that he doesn't have a third, it makes a big difference. It makes you know that, okay, he's two basing me right now and I'm feeling confident that my build is, like this build is going to be great against a two base build. Um, okay. Uh, and then, yeah, so just scouting a third is important, just to know. The other thing that's super important is you actually have missed quite a bit of larvae this game for all the reasons we've already talked about. Your queen's going to your hatcheries right. as they finish and all yada, yada, yada. But the big thing that you're also missing out on too is you did not saturate your third mineral line and not saturating your third mineral line, even though you have a lot of money here, you actually have a ton of money. Um, it's actually really... Um, yeah, that's one of my big problems. I, I just don't know when to spend it sometimes. You should be spinning it no matter what. This should be your this should be your idea. This should, like, I'm glad you said that because I'm gonna say this in a different way that'll hopefully make more sense. Okay. Um, when you scout your opponent, his expansions are what tells you how you're safe. A hundred percent. That's how you know if you are or if you're not safe, especially in something like Gold League, where it's a little bit more basic. The game is more basic in this region, basically. So you scouted first with your Overlord, and you went, okay, he's got a natural. Your first Overlord saw it. That automatically tells you I am more than safe to saturate two bases. Because right. you're not getting you're he's not gonna have like four four proxy racks killing you at that point or something like that. Um the the most he's gonna do is harass you, not all in you at that point, like that early. Um and then when you scout him again further and you should, you know, take your third, saturate your natural, you can follow up a scout and go, Alright, I wanna see if he's taking a third base. And if he's not taking a third base, you can make like like 12 roaches or something like that. I think, I think in the Bronze Gym series, I said something usually between like 12 and 16, right? You can make somewhere in that region of roaches. And right now you currently have 26. So you've kind of overmade here. But you can, you 100%, if he's expanded to a natural, just make like, just, we'll just say 14, okay? Just make it a magic number. Make 14 roaches. Sure, sure. And then as soon as you make 14 roaches, no matter what you're doing, saturate your third. Just as long as he has two bases, saturate your third base. Oh, the whole mineral line. And then, if he still doesn't have a third, you can maybe fly an overseer into his base and be like, how much stuff do you have? Or if you don't want to do that and you just want to you know, make units and stuff and just spread creep and do, this, do it this way, I would be okay if you massed units on three base economy. And the only thing I'd worry about you for you then is you don't know if you don't know if he is going like mass banshees or mass ground units, that could be a problem, possibly. Because uh, you know, it just happens sometimes, but um But yeah, your your economy is a little inefficient. Uh just because yeah. of, of the amount of roaches you have. And the other thing that makes it really good is is if you have more money to work with and you have money you have, you have tr like a little bit of trouble sometimes spending your money, you're more than able to be like, all right. I got three mineral lines saturated. Let's take a fourth base, even though I'm not going to saturate it and it might die. I'm still going to build it because what if it doesn't die? And then what if I can just start transferring drones to it uh, from my main as it mines out and we're good. And you could even build a yeah. macro hatch when, when you're fully saturated and you're third, you could not only take a fourth base, but you could take like a ma another macro hatch in your main base. So suddenly now you're on five hatcheries with three base economy, 
which is going to be insane at building roaches in, in uh, hydras. So the timing would be is like literally like this. Uh, two base saturation, 14 roaches. Third base saturated, two extra hatcheries to go to five hatch. Mass roach. Okay. And then, uh, and then you would have you, your supply would be huge right now, because right now it it um, if you're going if you only have roaches, uh, I'm sorry I keep pausing it, but I'm just gonna say this one last thing before I watch this. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. At like right around like eight minutes and thirty seconds, if you're only going roaches, you honestly could already be maxed. And it and if you look at how much resources you have, that is enough to make. If we look at the gas, gas is easier to break down here. You could make. 14 roaches right now. Or wait. I think I said that wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, you can make 32 roaches. I take that back. It's 32 roaches with okay. your with your gas. Because it's... Um, am I right? It's four. Yeah. It's 32. It's 32. Okay. I'm sorry. I was doing the math in my head and I was like, am I right? Anyways, it's, it's a lot of roaches and that's... Uh, that's uh, 64 supply on top of what you already have, which would basically max you out. Um, so yeah, just like the larva is kind of being a hiccup right now. And that's kind of where your problem lies here in this game. Um, if we back it up one more time, uh, right before the fight starts, sure. if we look at the supply, again, we, we talked about your income, your money. Look at his money. He's he's actually putting his build to the brink of what it's capable of. He's just, right. if you look at his barracks, and this is why, it just go to his barracks and like control click it or just double click it and look at all those white bot, little white dots of production. Yeah. He's got three marauders, three marauders, three, three, two. So he's got queued up already um, like 1,500 minerals in these barracks. That's not even out yet. Um, it's just easier to, to macro like that for Terran. You just hold the button down. But for Zerg, if you don't actually maintain your injects, you can't hold the button down because you don't have the resources to do that or the utility to do that. So hatchery timings we talked about will help you a ton if you do that. And then right now, uh, you're fighting against an army that is equal supply to you, but trades way better than you. One Marauder absolutely kicks the shit out of one roach 1v1 and you're fighting okay. you're fighting against 32 marauders with 27 roaches so you actually have a less uh yeah i think you have more in production you have four six more in production my, but my point is is yeah your your army is going to lose in a equal yeah, supply situation for sure magic. you should you should be uh the way it should be going is you should always be out numbering him in supply That's actually a good way to, to look at it. Whenever you look at your own replays, if you're not beating, if nothing's really happened in the early game and not, like, you know, you haven't lost any workers to some harass or something like that, that's set you behind. If nothing has happened, you should always be ahead of your opponent by like uh, up to 100 supply. It's about like 10% higher than them. And then up to like 200 supply. And once you pass that 100 supply threshold and now you're going into 200 supply, you should always be like 25% ahead of them in supply. Like just a bit, there should be a big margin between your supply all the time. Because you can produce faster than they can if you macro correctly. And it does look like you're eventually going to clean this up. Which is why, if we think about what I talked about earlier, where I said it's a really good idea to have like something scouting a third base. If you knew 100% that this dude was not taking a third, you the perfect response to this that you should have in your and your like mentally for yourself would be if I just don't stop injecting and I just keep making units, I already won the game. Because your economy is better than his. It should be better than his if it's three base versus two base. And if you just never if you just make a priority to do injects, like we can see your uh, your main and your natural are currently being injected, but look at your third. You get a queen there with 93 energy. It's stuff like this that where that's now three, almost four injects missed, which is nine larva, soon to be 12 larva that you've missed. Right. Um, and then that's, you know, so many units you could have otherwise. 
I'm actually gonna go back one more time and I'm gonna look at your camera uh, when the fight's going on. I kind of want to see how you do it. Uh, what you're looking at. <clears throat> Alright, so you see it coming. Um, you're trying to make a concave. I I think um, the idea you had to make a concave was great. But I will say the location you chose to concave at was just slightly too close. Uh -huh. uh, and here, This is why. Hear me out. This is why. A Marauder has almost twice the range. Not quite, but it's got a bit more range than a Roach. And you're fighting in, a, in an area where the Marauder can actually fan out on the high ground and still fight back and start getting... And it starts forcing you into a choke point, which is not great. So if you actually backed up just a little bit further and made him have to commit further down the ramp... Because like, if this guy A moves right now, he can, he can definitely take the lead here. I think he move right. commands, though, for a second, which is you're very fortunate that he did that. Um, but if you back up a little bit more, he has to commit further into the choke point, which reduces his concave, and it gets it just allows more of your roaches to fight. Because, right. yeah, I, I, but I do think he moved command, so you're pretty lucky he does that. Because we'll see it. He moves right here for a second, and then he starts fighting. If he would have just fought all those roaches on like the left side where your two hydras are, you would have like nine roaches or ten roaches not shooting at all. Uh, mm. There. So just always make sure if you have the less range unit. Just make sure that you're the one forcing him into a choke point, not the other way around. And giving yourself more room to back up with is always key here. And roaches always are almost roaches are almost always going to be the unit with less range. They're pretty bad in terms of how far they can shoot. They're good. They're good at durability, but they yeah they have shitty range. Yeah. And then if we look at your camera here, I'm gonna instead of talking about the engagement as much, I just want to see your camera movements. Sure. Alright, and, uh, so you, like, you, you know, you did the classic th StarCraft player thing where you watch the entire fight, which is, it's understandable, but, um, if, well, I'm gonna take a quick glance one more time again, and there's actually a lot more objects being missed than we just previously, ta previously talked about. If we look at your main, you have a queen with 79 and a queen with 78, if we look at your natural, right. 88, there's just so much in missing, injecting. yeah, because, like, there is injects now, and you can queue them up so it looks like you spend all your energy, but if you might have missed like a previous full two minutes of injects before that, because your queens are almost at 100 energy each, that's pretty devastating. And that's, that is literally why you have 3,000 minerals, almost. Mm. So make it a priority. Make sure that every game you play just for now, you have, you, you're, you have like a good uh, foundation to work with already. Like your creep is already on par for where it should be. It's even, it's beyond where it should be. If I had to, if I had to rate your, what I see so far, I would say your creep spread is like that of a platinum to a diamond player. Because you're already touching the middle of the map at 9 minutes. That's not bad. And you're being attacked yeah. as well. Um, but your injects are a bit low. Like your yeah, your injects are, sure. your injects are probably like <laughs> a little bit lower than what they should be at right now. Maybe like silver. Um, yeah. so well, that's if you, what I would think I was at in this game. Yeah. So just, uh, if you just if you just tell yourself to take a little bit more priority to do that. Like you don't look at a fight. Just try to put your stuff in a good spot where you you, t you look at it for like literally less than three seconds. And you go, right. this seems like where I should fight. Because the beautiful thing about your creep is, is your creep is good. So you can see yeah. where he's coming from. And you can go, okay, yeah. well now I get to choose where I get to fight. Because I see him coming like two screen lengths away from my base. So you have a lot of time to react. And you can be like, alright, this seems like a good space to fight, to fight at. And you just... Before the fight starts, and you you set your army up to get ready to fight, and before it actually starts, look at your bases and go, Queen's good, Queen's good, Queen's good. And then when you know, okay, I just spent all my injects on my, on my Queens, and my money is going to be being spent here, I'm going to be making units, you then can look at the fight a little bit more, because you now know you have like the next 15 seconds to be like, alright, I have nothing I got to really do. I can, I can creep spread a little bit if I really want to, but I can focus a little bit more of my time, because I did all the important stuff first before now looking at this fight. Right. Because you actually, I'm not going to lie, you would have been better off if you took, if you just let your army be idle and you just focused on making roaches only and you flooded more roaches out nonstop. You would have won right, even if you were I, AFK. Yeah, I have so much money to just sit in there. Yeah, because it, it's like the difference of having like 30 roaches 
with trying to be micro a little bit versus having 60 roaches just, just letting the AI do it for you. Just when it, they get attacked, right. they just attack for you. 60 roaches, 100% 100, 100 would have won this fight. And then, um, yeah, and again, just to reiterate one more time, well, I'll let it keep going. But if you know he doesn't have a third, again, the, the biggest priority is just keep making units and you know you're going to win because he's he's committed to an all-in now. He's not trying to expand and uh, I, I got to pause one last thing and just say this last thing. If you know your opponent is not expanding, it should make you, like a lot of players feel like they're losing control of games a lot. But if your opponent's all inning you like this and you know he hasn't expanded, you should feel like every second that goes by, you're gaining more control of the game. Because at 10 minutes in the game, if we look at your main base, half your patches are gone. If you look at his main base, half his patches are gone. And he has two minute, two, just two bases, and he has now lost 25% of the uptime capacity of his mineral lines. Like, he's he's eight, at a, you know, eight on one, and he's actually on 14 on the other, so he's lost even more than 25%. Yeah, he's he's definitely he's kind of like if you look at his income, it is not what it was once before. He's starting to bleed out, and if he doesn't ever expand, and you know that because you're you have to have a unit sitting there, you have a hundred percent control, and you just know that if you just like max, you just won the game. You're just gonna win because he his his follow up army pushes are gonna be so crappy. They're gonna get worse and worse. Well, a lot of players do panic because they don't know how to read the game, but that is a great way to read the game. And it just takes looking at a third base. You just leave a unit there. And you know if the unit's still alive, he has no third. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're starting to trade a little bit better with the Hydras, but the biggest problem is... Is you just have you keep having uh, to take fights where you just have less supply, and you can see right here. This is a perfect example. This is the this is the stuff where I'm talking about your priority. Look at uh, just hit U really fast to open up the units tab, and look at the larva, and then watch for this period of time. Just watch what happens. I will say right now, your priority definitely should be spinning that larva, but you're getting kind of caught up in the fact that you're you know you see some runners they're almost dead they're attacking you. And you're microing. You're trying to like kite him and stuff. And kiting him doesn't matter because Marauders have more range and they also have concussive shells. So the second he tags you one time, not only will he keep shooting you when you run away, but he will kill you because Marauders kick the shit out of roaches. And um, and then it's just a waste yeah. of your actions, basically. And then you don't actually make new roaches until your existing ones basically die. So you're, again, priority... I know I'm going to say this like a hundred times, but it's super important. I have to drill it. It's just the larva. It, it makes the biggest difference out of everything. Um, but yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's, I don't know. That's right, pretty cool. much it. Larva, larva, larva. Any questions about that one otherwise? Anything that you weren't sure about? No, no, no. It's, it's good seeing a different you know, perspective. All right, and then uh, yeah, just uh, for the next one, uh, next replay, just do it same way again. Okay. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Oh, uh, uh, we're gonna have to remake really fast. Uh, okay, okay. For the, I'll make you. Um, yeah, the lobby host, because I don't get to have control host. of the uh, the timers now. Okay. So you were saying you played this game for a month or two months? Uh, yeah, about a month. Have you played any RTS before? I played StarCraft like I don't know, nineteen ninety nine. Nice, dude. Yeah. So you're you're coming back from like a long break then. Long, yeah. I mean. Nice. That's yeah, cool, dude. Played it forever. Well, I'm, uh, that's sick, man. I'm glad that this brought you back. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so
So this one's really quick. Um, it was just a BC rush. He rushed one BC and just blew me out. Okay. I'm just wondering, you know, is there just like something I could have done? So before we even so see it. I missed it. scouting okay. the fusion core. Sure. So like I made like one spore at each base, but then he just blew me out. I'm going to throw something out there though. And I'm going to say, yeah, sure. I guarantee if he, if this guy goes for a really fast battle cruiser rush, I guarantee he doesn't have a natural by the time you get there. It's very unlikely that he will. And if yeah. he if he does not have a natural, because because if he if he's going for a battle cruiser rush, what he has to do to do that is he has to go for mm -hmm. gas a lot faster. And the faster you go for gas, the later your expansion is going to be, because you, you can't afford everything at once. You just can't. Right, right, right. Um, so if his if the, the, like your first overlord tells, oh, excuse me, your first overlord tells you so much, because if you like the last game you saw when you got to his base, you saw a natural that was like finishing basically. You're like, all right, he's got two depots on the ramp, and his natural is like done. So that tells you he does not have a lot of gas. But if you scout this guy and he's either got no natural at all or it's like just starting, you could be like, okay, your natural is really late. And why is that? It's probably because he has a lot of gas. And if he has a lot of gas, that should already start preparing you for like a tech build. Like it poss possibly Banshees. It could be, um, you know, something something gas heavy. It could be Cyclones. It could be uh, Battlecruisers, like you just said. Yeah. And that would be, uh, that's when it's a great time if you know your opponent has a lot of gas because their expansions are so delayed. That's a great time when you are with when you add in an Overseer to scout their base with this build and just fly through it once and be like, what are you doing? Are you rushing me? Are you, what are you, like, what is happening here? All right, uh, and yeah, so far in the game, um, nothing really, like, your build's totally fine up to this point. Nothing really to talk about here for mis in terms of, like, mistakes or anything like that. But what, what we're looking for, though, is we're looking for the natural. I want to see it. when Because I'm not looking at everyone's vision. I'm also, I'm looking at yours, so I want to see what you see. Yeah. Uh, and you see exactly, so I was talking about, there's no natural, which means that 100% right now, you should be thinking to yourself, this guy probably has a lot of gas, or he's proxying me. And the way that you can right. rule out he's proxying you is if you just scout the ramp now a little bit, and you just see, does he have anything on the ramp? I do tell people... Yeah, I do. I scout uh, okay. in after this. Okay, okay, we'll see it. So you see a depot, you see a marine, you see a bunker, barracks, and already... Right now, just like this, you could you could still go on further, and if it dies, it dies. But already seeing that bunker, I feel like with that bunker on the like, not only is that bunker already been built, this is really fast, but it's been built on the high ground, which means that there's less of like there's less incentive for him to expand because the bunker would do nothing to protect the natural. Right. It'd be like making a photon cannon in your main, and you're trying to go fast to expand on Protoss. You know, like you can as right. Zerg, it kind of makes sense because you can rotate if you want to make a spine, but. For Terran, it definitely doesn't. Like this, may, this means that he's this like reinforces the fact that he's probably got gas. And um, we'll see what else so Overlord I just, does. Like skirted around so I could maybe see something else because I was looking for a starport here. Sure. And I found it, but then I just didn't see the fusion core. So, um, another thing too, I like that you're seeing the gas and you're also still out of vision. You can see if you if you pause it again, uh, right here. You can see uh, if I if uh, or I'm not going to ask you a question. I'll just tell you. A gas yeah, yeah. has 2,250 starting gas, and this gas is already at 1838, which means he's already mined over 400. It's 412, and um, 400. Oh, you can actually click on the gla the gas and see how much is left. Yep. I didn't know that. That's cool. And then not only does he have this, has he mined this much gas on this gas alone, but seeing the fact that he doesn't have an expand and he has a bunker in the main, that would make me think he also has his other gas. So if this mm -hmm. guy has, <clears throat> let's just say hypothetically, he took these gases at the same time, which is probably not the case, but it could be. But that would mean he has over 800 gas. Realistically, though, I imagine if he's already mined over 400 in this one, that's probably his first gas. Uh, and then the second one maybe might be a little bit delayed. Like maybe, maybe the second one only mined 200. Either way, yeah. though. Either way, we've seen a barracks, even even bigger, a barracks with no add-on, 
There's no gas expenses. Mm -hmm. Marines, no add-on, no Reaper. There's been no gas cost out of his barracks at all. You can very, very highly assume that there is not only a bar not only a factory, but there's very likely a starport. The only way a factory would make sense right now is if it was like two factories and an armory and he was going to do some like Hellbat timing with like Cyclones or a Thor timing or something super fucking weird. But that yeah. e even then, like if you don't see that ha happening like really soon, it's very likely going to be a starport. I'd say like 90% chance it's starport here. Uh, okay. Because starport is like probably the most cost efficient thing Terran can do in terms of having a small amount of units kill a lot of your opponent. Like if, if you make a lot of lings and he goes for like one Thor, he'll just die. Um, but if he ma if he makes a battle cruiser, suddenly it's a lot harder to kill. Okay. So yeah, just as there's like kind of assuming now it's a starport is already a good idea. And then um, there's a yeah, factory. Let's go see the factory. And I'm gonna ask. I am actually gonna ask you a question now. What do you see about the factory? Is there anything that makes you feel suspicious here? Yeah, no tech lab. Exactly. He has no add-on. No tank. So, 100%, I, if I were you, I would immediately, the second I saw the factory now, I'd be like, okay, it's starports. You may, you might not know where they are, unless you see the starport. It might be proxied. But oh, so it's... So, this is a different game. I'd miss the starport, because the starport's down by his mineral line. Sure, that's fine. But just seeing what we see now, it's it, like, it very much looks like a starport build. And a great way yeah. to go about dealing with this would be just make blind spore crawlers in your mineral line if he's on one base like this, and the time to do it would be like four minutes. If you start spores at like four minutes, there is not a single thing a starport can do that's going to screw you over that fast. Okay. Um, and then you can still go layer all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, like four minutes and one spore per mineral line, and you're, that's like a good starting point. And then you can still do your roaches and you know, move out and like standard and take your third base. Right. <coughs> um, but yeah. This very much seems like a starport build. And then if you if you really want to and you have a little bit of extra money, which you do this game, I would not be opposed to you making extra queens. Like off of your hatchery that's not making a lair. So I should should maybe be looking at that. Okay. So I should have already made spores here. Yeah. Gotcha. Also, I'm gonna back we we, we focused really heavily there on your um on your scouting. Scout. But I'm gonna look before right as the scout starts, and I wanna look at your injecting again and your uh and you're spending like you're spending. Yeah, sure. So we have a queen started in your main, your natural. Let's look at your natural for a second. The queen is being delayed. Oh, okay, it's only delayed by like five seconds, but or like four seconds. Not super bad. Your la last game, your net, your queen, your natural was built. Yeah. It was when your bad. main was done, so at least this one was a bit faster. That's good. Uh. And you're making a spine. I would say the spine is not a bad call. I know. I, I think I had also told people make a spine if you don't see a natural. That's yeah, something I told you to that do. That was just the basic rule. Uh, I just stuck to it. You can still do that if you want. But I would say a spine is probably not necessary if you see a bunker like this. And you also see no add-on. Like that is a mm -hmm. huge tell that this guy is not going to attack you. He's right. instead rushing yeah, see, something. Yeah, like you reading that, like I don't see that. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's cool though. In general, if, if like if, if in the future you just still feel uncomfortable, hundred percent more than welcome to make a spine. But if you ever see your an, a, an investment into static D from your opponent, it's not cheap to do that. And it even if they still want to attack you, it delays their attack because they made static D. So even if you skip right. the spine, you can still have you'll be closer to that point when you actually have the ability to make your units defend yourself anyways. Right, and then your main is missing an eject. You actually are running down to the natural to put a tumor down first. Um, and then your natural. See what you do here. Yeah, like you're you're focusing a lot on the scouting right now for sure, and yeah. you're you're missing so much inject time. And then if we also the if we it. if we hit uh, you oh, and open up your uh, we open up your larva. You have uh, you have four drones just now being started, and you didn't larva cap, but you were super close to to hitting that point. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just like it's, you're missing out on so much right now, and the reason why is because you're kind of I feel like you're just kind of freaking out a little bit by uh, 
what you've seen, you're like, oh god, it's aggression, aggression, right, and it's making yeah, me miss a little bit. Like, what the yeah. Fuck's happening, yeah. Man? yeah, Nate, thank you very much for the what raid, dude, and uh, welcome everyone from uh, Nate's stream. Welcome, guys. I'm doing a coaching lesson. Welcome to the party. All right, and then we have um, double Evo, and so like this game, your I would say your layer is delayed, and your your tech is a little too early. The great a great timing to go for if you're gonna do this build like this, is your your first as long as you're spending all your money, your first uh, like your larva is what I'm trying to say. Larva is always the priority, but the second you have over 100 gas and you have no larva just chilling on your hatcheries and no queens ready to inject either, you then can make a layer. And right after you make a layer, that should always be when you make a Roach Warren. Because a layer has a 57 second build time. And a Roach Warren has a 39 second build time. So you have a little yeah. bit of difference there where you can make you can make your Roach Warren like maybe like 10, 12, 15 seconds later after your layer starts. And they'll still line up perfectly together. Because the reason why, the, what you're kind of aiming to go for here is you want to be able to make Roaches right as you start getting Roach speed. And if you also time it like this, your natural will be fully saturated when you start making roaches. Because the last thing you want to yeah. do is have a roach horn that's done super early and then have uh, uh, a mineral line that's only got like 10 on it. And now you're like, do I want to make roaches? Because if you do, you're right. fucking yourself super hard. Um, and if you don't, then as you just have, you've invested into a, you've lost a drone and, and not only the Evo chambers, but the roach horn, which is losing you income. That is going to slow down the pacing at which you can fully saturate. Because every drone you're you're losing in tech right now, or in your buildings, is a you know, less percentage of your saturation that you need. Because you're still undersaturated. Do you mind if we go to the next one before we run out of time? Here? No, uh, I tell you, we'll, we'll do the next one regardless. I got you, dude. We'll go a little over. I'm crazy. All right. Cool. I'm fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> this one, yeah, this one's done in like a couple minutes. No, we're gonna be done with this one in an hour. We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding, dude. But I do want to see the BC, and I want to see how you react. Um, so far, though, you... Basically, I only have two queens, and they just get... Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm going to pause it one more time and say, so far, do you feel with what we talked about, with, like, what you've scouted, does it feel a little bit more comfortable for you to, like, read what he's doing, possibly? Yeah, no, that's good. That's good to, like, see through your... Like, oh, shoot, that, like, you know, no tech lab, no reactors, like... Yeah. yeah, yeah, like it, it just makes it seem like it's more of a starport heavy thing. And if you really want to, you can just click it really quick on the gas. You don't have to do this at all. It's not required. Yeah. But if you if you really want to, you can. And you could even. That's cool to know. And it starts at what did you say? Twenty five hundred. Twenty two fifty. Twenty two fifty. Okay. I would say that this like I, I you're currently in gold. Clicking on the gas is definitely above gold league. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's something you can keep in the back of your mind for future reference. Right. But the reason why this would make sense and why it would be something you should know is because if you knew how much resources everything costs in the game, like if I were to ask you, how much resources does a factory cost? Do you know that, that off the top of your head? How much resources does a factory? No, I don't yeah. play Terran. Okay, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like clicking the ask for you right now is, is irrelevant. Ooh. You don't need right. to do it right now. But eventually, if you start kind of memorizing that kind of stuff, it will become relevant. Because if you were to go, okay, this guy has mined 400 gas, and he doesn't have an add-on nor on either the factory or the barracks, and he doesn't have a reaper. He made nothing that costs gas so far, which means he has there's. It would have been like a 50 cost gas for like a reactor. Let's say he makes a tech lab on a factory, which is 125 gas in total, because the factory is 100 and a tech lab is 25, which is now we're at 175 of what could have been there. And then now he's mined 400, so we have 225 unaccounted for, which could mean that there could be there could easily be like two starports behind his mineral line if he really wanted it to be like that, or there could be one with a tech lab being built on it, and you know maybe like a fusion core started soon. Fusion core is 150, uh, starports also 100. It, a lot of the buildings are have like really similar costs, but you I would say that's that's kind of a we don't really need to go super deep yeah, into this yeah, because yeah. it's something that's, that's not really yeah, relevant. I mean. Maybe I'll do another one when I hit diamond or something. You can tell me more about it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sounds good. Dude. But uh, but anyways, just yeah, seeing seeing no add-ons. That's the big one we should look for. No add-ons, no use really out of these buildings. Definitely starport. If you were to be throwing down spores like I told you at like around like four minutes, seeing that he's one base, yeah. you would more than easily you would have spores finishing like right now. 
And yeah. uh, you would be, you would have something to at least work with at first. And then the other thing too is, is, uh, and they see there's a battle cruiser. You would have a spore right now being able to help you here. And the other thing too is, um, this is great, great advice. And I highly recommend following it. Mm -hmm. If you know your opponent is teching hard and not expanding, just start making queens. Mm. Like, I want you to make queens. You can still make roaches and do your build, but I want you to make queens up to the point to when you have, like, at least, like, seven in total. Oh, okay. Like, six or seven queens. And you yeah. can make them all off your natural. You can do, you can do your layer uh, off your main, and, and, you know, stuff like that, because uh, you're going to most likely be doing that because you're following the bronze GM build. But off your layer... Once it's done, you can if you know okay this guy is super all in with one base, you can start making queens off the off of your layer in your main, and you can still just keep making queens off of your natural. But just keep in mind if you're gonna do this, the priority is still your larva. So I don't want you to be like making queen like have a queen in the hatchery being built, and you have two larvae sitting there at your natural and like two at your main, and you have twenty minerals. Don't do that. Right. I want you to spend your larva yeah. first I'm always. Spend the larva. Yeah, yeah, like creep spread or uh, not creep spread. Um, inject and spin larva always as a priority, and then with your excess, be like, oh, I'll make a queen, 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 and you could go two base queens with like two spores here, and you would have crushed this. Uh, because by the time it shows up, you would uh, you guarantee would have had at least four queens, maybe five, and you would have had two one spore per base. So it doesn't matter where he goes. Right, right, right. I would have. This. That's cool. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. Like, how do I know I should be building? So and then cool. and then also I'm going to pause one more time and say something else really quick um, if you by the time you get your roaches out okay uh, and you, you could stop making queens by like 7 by the way but by the time you get your roaches out let's say you're like okay this guy is still not expanding and I'm going to send an overseer into his base and let's just say hypothetically your overseer does not scout anything star starport related at all even though you've made two spores and you're like okay he's actually going mass thors defensively yeah you could actually just expand again at that point and make one of your creep spreading queens or like three out of your seven let's say seven queens could now become injecting queens for your three bases and four of those queens could like expedite your creep spread and they could just like increase the speed at which it spreads because now instead of having like one added tumor every time with one extra queen now you're adding four tumors at a time so your creep is going yeah. fucking nuts and then yeah and then you could be like, all right, well, I'm still getting use out of these queens, even though I'm not able to actually defend a starport with them because he didn't go starport. Right. So it's still universally good uh, if you're being all in in a lot of ways. So I just go up with my queens and then... That's yeah, it. You're, you're, super dead. <laughs> you're super dead. You're super dead. There's no yeah, way. Super dead. Yeah. No way out. And like, yeah. Uh, if, you, if your queens don't have enough energy to transfuse, one battle cruiser can realistically kill five queens, I would say. Oh, wow. And then he can just, like, fly away off the side of a cliff and his battle cruiser doesn't die. Or he can teleport away. Because yeah. if you if you have a spore, though, a spore is super good. Because if I were to t if I were to compare the damage here for you, uh, yeah. let's say you don't have a weapon upgrade. Because most of the time you won't have a weapon upgrade in this situation. Um, the only reason why you do is because you took your evos before a layer, which is really early. Uh, but a sp look at a spore color's damage. Against a BC, it's 15 at every 0.61. And a queen would be doing 9 at every point seven one. A, a spore, like, I, if you do the math, Almost you can break double. it down. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's it's so much more fucking damage. And the other thing, too, that's huge is a spore has 400 hit points. Right. A queen only has 175. So it's really easy to have your queens kind of, like, wrap around a spore and protect the spore and just poke the BC with the spore crawler. So if a BC mm -hmm. runs away, the, on the only thing I would say queens are better at than a spore is the fact that they have more range. And they're mobile, so you can chase a BC if it goes away out of spore range. But if it ever, but your spores, if they're in the mineral line, that's where your drones are, which is where the BCs want to be. And he always has to fight a spore there. Right. Um, okay. And and against a one base BC opener, queen spore would absolutely destroy that. Yeah. All right, and then yeah, uh, we can jump in the next one. That's pretty much it for this one. Oh. I actually have to bio real quick, so... Yeah, sure, no problem, dude. Go for it. Alright, All right, stream. Stream. He's AFK for a moment. Uh, I'll catch up on the subs. 
Sorry, guys. I am doing a coaching lesson, so I'm kind of trying to give him my full attention here. Um, I don't want to get distracted and ignore him and stuff. Uh, but Nightman uh, two hundred two, thank you very much for the four months. Fatman six five three three, thank you very much for the four months. Aloysius Pendergast, thank you for the nine. Uh, and Cobra Cock, <laughs> thank you for the prime. Welcome, dude. I could use some of this coaching love, Simpai Vibu. Hey, man. I'm available all the time. But yeah, we're almost done. We're going to do one more replay, then that'll be the end of the lesson. And for anybody out there uh, on Twitch right now listening, I do post all of my coaching lessons to YouTube as well. So if you guys are like, you know what? I'm actually, I, I feel like I'm learning something right now, and I like it. I want to learn more. If you guys go to my YouTube um, you can check that out uh, at your leisure and it's got I have so many coaching lessons posted there so many different ranges of leagues and uh, yeah man and then lots of other I have replay analysis just lots of stuff if you guys are interested All right, I'm back. welcome back dude welcome back alright so is this last one is EVT yeah alright sounds good uh, but it looks like it's the last patch so I guess I can't do it alright so here's what you gotta do uh, we can still do it. It's just a different way. Uh, go oh, to the okay. go to the Discord chat that we're both in, and then drag and drop that replay into the into the chat we're in, and then I can just open it up and watch it myself. Okay. Uh, oh, so I have to go to like my file. Yeah. Okay. So go to your documents folder, and yeah, then yeah, I got you. Yeah. Actually, I guess we could do this one instead. If you want, yeah, it's your, it's your call. Yeah. Cause like I was like one, so there's there's two. So one I I like broke his BCs and then I lost a bio. And there's a different one where like I went broods, and then I just got blown out. Yeah. Um. I guess uh, let's just go to the BCs one. Sure. In um, just to give you like a a quick, like a very very short and sweet description of how yeah. I would say you should beat BCs in gold, going B going broodlords is fine, especially if you back it up with Hydra. I don't even though I don't think that's the best composition to beat it, it's totally fine to do something like that because if you just make enough, you'll one hundred percent win, and it'll flow into your build super easy because, um, you're only making the spire for the purpose of broodlords in case he has like planetaries or tanks as well or like widow mines or something like that so i don't do it for corruptors against the bcs they're not good or? no corruptors are amazing against bcs but corruptors require micro and my whole point God. of this is not to micro like you don't want right. like if every because you noticed already before in the previous game we looked at you were yeah. looking so much at your marauder or your uh, your roaches versus marauders and you're wasting so much time that you could have been producing more units on right which is actually what's important yeah It's like, it's misleading, because every time you watch StarCraft, you're like, oh, this guy's microing his ass off. But what you don't see is a lot of times while they're microing, they're tabbing to production and making shit while they're doing it. Right. Alright, so... Da, 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 da. And then uh, for the Overlord pathing uh, on this one, it looks like your Overlord's going right to the main. Um, I, I haven't seen it exactly where it's going to go yet, but I would say always make sure you want to go to the natural first. It gives you so much information if it does commit to the main. Yeah, it's committing to the main. So, oh, wait, here we go. We'll see where you go further. And then you're, we're going to pause just for what brief moment. What is ha happening here? This happens every game. I want to see your, uh, your hatcheries. Uh, did I not start the second queen again? I think your natural is like, uh, I want to see when you're sending your drone down. 
I can. I want. I guess I really want to help you with this. <laughs> every because every <laughs> game here, natural queen is always like ten seconds behind. Okay, that's that's exactly why, right? Er. You're going for an 18 hatch, and uh, this is why this is happening. Um, so what you should do is the second oh, you're. Oh no, I messed this up. I usually go 17. Okay, and wh when do you send a drone down to your natural then? So usually, uh, so like it goes drone overlord oh, drone yeah. that overlord spawns drone drone and then usually that last drone i'll send once it spawns down to my hat so you send natural. you send the 17th drone to the natural yeah yeah well you should by the time it gets to the natural i have about 300 you usually. you'll have uh you're gonna uh, you'll have a little bit of excess if you send the 17th uh what you, what you should do is just to make it really simple when your overlord spawns you always have two larvae sitting there and you make two at once send one of those yep. two eggs to your natural one Be of the two. Okay. Yeah, because if you send one of the two, it'll you'll start sending it to your natural around 180. Whereas if you wait till the last round's done, you'll be sending it around like 220, 225. And um, gotcha. that will that that is a big difference right there in your uh, and because like you'll have it either way, um, but your yeah. queen will just be a more well timed basically. And also, if you if you have your queens timed at the same time, it'll be much easier to re to make them. Because what's happening right now is you have to keep making one and then remembering to make another one a few, like 10 seconds later. And if something distracts you like right. a reaper or like a scout, you might miss it. Alright, and then... Uh <laughs> yeah, and then you're sometimes you are missing the queen too. There's always like a five or six second period of time where the queen is delayed because you're again like the reaper or some shit like that. This will help you so much, dude. Make your early game just yeah. cleaner. And then also, so I shouldn't go um, creep first. I should always check first. Yeah, this this is the, uh, this is the key right here. I'm gonna give you the key to the gate. Okay, this is the key, <laughs> the golden key. So. Your overlord always should scout the natural first. This game, your overlord scouted the main and went up through it and then scouted the natural. There's a very good chance your overlord could die doing that. Um, because there's no high ground to really hide on here. And also it's delayed at your scout. It, your queens will be out before you know what the fuck's going on, basically. Mm -hmm. So it, if you go straight to the natural, if you do see a natural, double inject and you're fine. If you don't see a natural, one inject, one creep tumor. And, you're, and then that, then you're fine. And then you can start injecting again over and over and over. But if you inject and then tumor, when you see a natural, if you if so if you see he expanded, but you still make a creep tumor, it's gonna set you behind. Like you're like he's playing efficient with macro, and you're delaying your own. For like you don't really need to be doing that because like the big thing about the creep tumor that's really good is if your opponent is gonna apply aggression to you a lot faster because he's delaying his own expansion. It's really nice to have creep to work with in that yeah. situation. But it doesn't make any sense if he's going to macro anyways. Um, See, sometimes I do it on this map because I can't get the... Okay, that's... that's my, that's a, my tech is... That's a fair call. That's a fair call. So, that's I usually do it on this map, but uh, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I would say if you see an expansion first still, I would still not do it. Uh, do it. Yeah, but if because you can make like the, the second the, the like uh, the second you have your second twenty five energy and then you make a creep tumor, uh -huh. you'll still have your roach horn down in time before Hellions get to your base. If he, if he goes natural first, the only yeah. time you wouldn't is if he was like rushing the shit out of his gas and he went for the fastest factory he possibly could. Uh, then yeah, you might have a problem. So that's why it's super important to get your overlord to the natural so you know that if it is or is not expanding super early. And then also the other thing I've seen you do a couple times that I would recommend not doing is whatever queen you build, make sure that the queen, whatever base it's built in, that's where you put a creep tumor. Because I've seen you make a queen out of the main and run it down to the natural. And I think why you do that is because your queen at your natural is so delayed from what we just talked about a minute ago. Right, right, right. So, uh, yeah, just uh, the worst thing you can do is like make a queen and then just completely run away from a hatchery to a completely different base and then be like, make a tumor. <laughs> It'll slow your build down a lot, dude. Just what I keep doing. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll always make it a tr make it a habit of expansion early, 
Like, if your overload gets there and the, ha the command center is 80% done or further, it means that it's either a barracks into a command center or it's a straight-up command center first. If it's almost done when you get there or done, you can, oh, you can easily double inject. But if the command center is just starting or it is not even there at all, I am totally fine with you making one tumor and then one, uh, one inject. Okay. And then, this is going on YouTube, right? I could look to yeah, that, yep. I mean, I'm trying to retain... 100% you know, it is. But, That's what we talked about when you were gone. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then also, keep in mind, uh, as well, this is really important, just so you're not ever, like, second-guessing yourself. After yeah. your first two, no matter what you do, whether it's double inject or one tumor and one inject, always your first two queens are just spam injecting forever from that point. They're never doing anything else. And your, okay. your third queen out of your natural that you always build, that becomes your creep spreader. That's like your. Right. That's like the guy who just makes creep for a while. Because that is your honestly your biggest downfall that I keep seeing. Like you look at your main and you have fifty seven right now. It's uh, it's definitely holding you back a yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then also um, against Terran, if against with this build, always make sure you make a wall too. Like uh, there's. Because if, if, I'm just going to explain something really quick, just to make sure uh, you're on the right track here. If you were to make a tumor really fast to get the wall, and then you put part of your wall behind your mineral lane, there it literally was no purpose to have a creep tumor here, because now if you get hit by, like, Hellions, let's say, he's going to run in your base no matter what. There's nothing that's going to stop him. So you, what you always want to do right, is... Right. It takes a little bit of time to get used to it, because different maps have different sizes that you have to kind of get used to, because you don't want to literally block it entirely. You just want to leave a hallway one pixel wide where your queen can fit inside of it and hold position. And now he can't get in your base anymore when you open up roaches like this. And then and then you're fine. Once you start making roaches, you're fine. You don't need to keep the queen in the door very much anymore because at that point with your creep that I've seen, you'll have creep across like half the map almost or like a third of the map. Like your creep is great uh, in general for your league. And that then you're fine. You'll see it coming from a mile away. But just make sure you always wall yeah. properly. Like the roach one should be above yeah, we'll that. Like see how my creep is thing. this game. I don't know. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. <laughs> and then I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little bit of a question now. One more time. I'm gonna pause it and I'm gonna say. Yeah, sure. You've so far, you've seen a reactor that's almost done. You've seen a factory that's almost done. You've seen a barracks uh, that's made a reactor. You've, you've seen a bunker and a natural. What would you think? is realistically going to happen like from this point uh for the next like maybe like the next minute or two of this game what, what would you what do you think the possibilities are here well i didn't see a second racks so and i see the bunker so i'm thinking you know he's, i probably have some time here sure i don't know what he's going because i'm not and, i don't know how to read it at that point. sure and uh we'll talk more about that in a second and Sure. If, if you were, let's say you were playing this game right now, and you were like, let's say this, yeah. you took command, what would you do right now? What would be your next step? My next step? Yeah, like for the next, like, the, the next, like, 15 seconds, what would, what would your focus be? What would you, like, how would you play it out? Well, let's see here. I need to drone up to 45 before I start making units, so probably just droning up since I have time since he has a natural. Sure. And then probably start my upgrades soon. Here, got the layer going, so I should probably be getting speed as soon as it comes out. Sure. I might make like three roaches just to be safe, and that's about it. Probably just droning. Hard. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh. That's it's not super off. You're you're you have some good ideas. Uh. Like you're on the right track, but I will say yeah, sure. um a good way to a good way to read it is. Mm -hmm. It's similar to what we just talked about with like the command center timing with your overlord. The reactor timing is also just like that. If the reactor is... Because a reactor and a factory, they both have very similar build times. And a rea if you see a reactor that is on par with the production of a factory, very close, it's going to swap to a factory. Which means that right now, I would say in the next, few, the, the next point of this game, this guy has the ability to attack you with two. Or a little bit Hellions. later, four. Yeah, exactly. He can attack you with gotcha. however many sets of two he wants. He can delay it and attack you with right. six, four. He can rush you with two. Yeah. I do think you're correct when you say you should be droning right now, because there is no way this guy can really fuck you over if you drone at this point in yeah. time. It's super early, but the one way he can fuck you over is because of your placement of your buildings. 
if he decided he wanted to run four hellions in your base right now and go into your natural mineral line and roast eight drones and then drive up to your main and kill eight drones there, he 100% could. There's nothing stopping him from doing that right now. And if, we, if I remember what you talked about last time, so I'm taking my gases too early on my natural. You are. Because look, uh, look at your resources right now. You have... Um, yeah. You're still uh, undersaturated on your mineral lines, which I agree you should be making drones right now. You need to saturate. That's, that's super crucial yeah. here. Um, but if you were to spend the time for the next entire inject to make the next seven drones to saturate this base properly, that's another round of your larva that's not going to be made into roaches. And you already have right. more than enough gas to start making roaches and start all three of your upgrades. All, all three of your upgrades cost 350, by the way. And then each roach is 25. And you're mining off of three gases per, per, you know, like for your whole base count here. You got three gases going, which is more than enough to utilize all your larva into roach, 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 roach. So, yeah, a little, a little bit too early. Um, I do, however, love that you took a third base. Because this guy took a natural. What was that? You love the what? That you took yeah, a third uh, third base. Yeah. I like that you took it a, like a, earlier than you normally do. I think you are always should be doing this if you see your opponent goes for not only a command center at his natural and he's playing standard macro, but he also makes a bunker. That's, a, that's like a super sign for you to be like, let's take a third. Why not? Right. Uh, so I, I really like that you did it and always keep doing that in the future. Um, okay. But yeah, just in general, gas timings on your natural... Make them at least, at, at the very minimum, 10 drones on your natural. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, minim bare minimum, 10 drones, ideally. Yeah. Closer to 16. Um, okay. Because you don't want to ever, you don't really want to, like, undersaturate the shit out of your natural. And if you, if you, let's say you start making gas on your natural at, like, 7 drones. And then you make, your inject pops off and you make another, like, 8 drones. And then suddenly, only 2 of those get to saturate the mineral line, which is what just happened here. And now you have nine drones on the middle line while you have six on the gas. This is now going to severely hurt your income. And even though if you look at the harvester tab up here in the uh, top left, if you hit I, you can see a harvester tab. You see that you have uh, eight more workers than he does, but you're mining like the same shit as he is. And he only has one. He only has one mule as well. It's just it's not great. Like you're, you're definitely kind of screwing yourself over here. Right, right, right. And here's the Hellions. If this guy drives in your base, there's nothing that can stop your drones from dying. He might be super paranoid and cautious. But if he wanted to, that's a huge risk right there for you. <laughs> Got it. Uh, and on this map, perfect placement would be... Uh, just to say this, and then we'll move on. Perfect placement is directly above the... Uh, if, you look, if you watch the YouTube video, you can see me greenboxing it right now. Uh, but it's directly above the little like uh, brown boxes, because it'll leave it, like the where I made the green box here. It will leave one pixel gap where a queen and a roach can both fit, which will make it really easy to hold position and block aliens out. Yeah, um, and that's it. So just don't put it to the if you put it to the side, it'll be too big, and your um, one queen one queen can still block it, but it it just the the bigger the opening, the easier it is for you to possibly fuck it up and have units run inside your base. I like, by the way, I like that you built spores, blindly, um, because you're like you're not. I don't expect you to be scouting everything and be super informed as to everything that's always going on. But if you see someone who goes for a what looks like a tech opening up based off of Hellions, which could be like one one one, like one barracks, one factory, one starport, and he also expanded. I told you earlier to take spores at four minutes versus a one base against an expansion. If you take spores around four thirty. It's not going to fuck your economy up, really, but it's going to keep you really safe from possible Banshees or Liberators or something random that can hit you from the air. Yeah, he torches me hard here. Yep. And this wouldn't have happened at all if you had the wall. If I just had the wall. Yep. So right now you've already lost uh, 20 drones and counting. It's about to be 21. I'm, re I'm actually really glad this happened because I, you'll always get punished like this. Uh, and it's, it's just as simple as putting your roach one in the right spot. So it's a really easy fix. Okay, cool. And from this point on, you are kind of fucked. <laughs> like, this guy, he's gone, yeah. for a, he's gone for, like, a macro opener. He's not all in. And, um, at least not yet. 
Uh, he's he's more than capable of contesting you as the game goes on now. But your economy now sucks compared to his because he has now reduced you to the point to where you're either barely behind him or you're tied with him. And that is not good for Zerg. Because right. he will crush you with mules at that point. So now at this point, like... So I think I'm in silver here, and I, I, I think now I usually would send a second overlord just to see uh -huh. what he's up to. I agree with that. I think you should always. Just like, oh, go ahead. My, I've really been trying to work on my scouting because, like, I, I notice, like, I just don't know what the heck's going on a lot of the time. This is as easy as, as it should be for you, okay? Every time you hit a layer and you do, you're like, all right, I'm gonna start roach speed. I'm gonna start one one. I'm gonna start making roaches. When you have, when you've done all the priority that you already that you already have going on, you make your roaches upgrades. Once you have fifty gas, which is going to come really fast, just make an overseer, and keep it as simple as this. Seriously, I see a lot of units, or I mean, sorry, I see a lot of buildings that build ground units. Everything besides a uh, starport or a stargate, for instance, just make mostly roaches and some hydras early on. And if you, but instead, if you scout and you see mostly starport, let's say, let's say you saw one barracks, one factory, and three starports, or here, for instance, yeah. two, two starports and a double tech lab, and then you're about to fly into a battle cruiser if your overseer doesn't die. If this happens, just make hydras, like literally make maybe a few roaches, maybe like we're talking. When I say few, I'm talking about like maybe ten, because you still want to have somewhat of a front line in case he goes mass hellions, but make like ten roaches and then just make mass hydras. Make it super simple for yourself. And then if you cannot kill him with this, and you're like, God, he just doesn't die. He's got planetaries and shit, and I just can't break it. At that point, if you if you just can't do it, you can make broodlords. Like, eight broodlords. And then just keep flooding hydras behind it. Because as long Sometimes as... Sometimes like a ravager against planetary. Just no, 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 no. Don't do it. That, that's, that's... I know the micro. You're going to yell at me for yeah, that. Don't fucking micro, dude! Because look at your money right now. When you're, you're not Honestly, you're not even micro yeah, yet. I'm and like, you have 1,100. Should be and the reason, the reason why you have eleven hundred is because you're getting hesitant, you're getting paranoid, and you're scouting, yeah. and you're like, "What is he doing? What is he? Do oh God, uh, I need to scout. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to make. What is he doing?" And exactly. it's it's seriously as simple as just make shit. He's got air units, make hydras. He's got ground units, make fucking roaches. And as long as you maintain good economy, like th that is everything. You can be like, "Okay, you have seven siege tanks. You've made a lot of tanks." And I just made 65 roaches. Last I checked in the what counters what, roaches die fucking hard to tanks. But suddenly they don't because you only have like 21 supply of tanks. And I have like 130 supply of roaches. <laughs> right. So I just fucking win. <laughs> and this will happen to you all the time if you play like that. And having that mindset, you can evolve that as time goes on and be like, okay, maybe I should actually try to... Um, Maybe micro my units a bit more, or maybe diversify my tech, or make something with it that seems like a more intelligent counter to what he's doing. But for now, j literally just focus on, I need to utilize my larva. Make it and use it. And if I can do that, I doesn't matter what my opponents make. Even if they make mass air and you make right. mass roach, you could still probably yeah, win. Yeah, like I'm looking at my units here. Remember the other, do you remember the other game, how I told you um, you could be maxed out by like 830? Like if you were like yeah. macroing like a fucking boss, basically. Right, right, right. That's like that's like a checkpoint you could have. Obviously, this game you couldn't because you lost a lot of drones at your natural. But um, you did build drones as they died, so you recovered kind of fast. I would say that that little attack probably sets you back by about one minute. So you could this game you could probably max up by like nine thirty, because nothing has happened since then. He has not attacked you once since then. Yeah. But the problem you're having here is uh, you're not sure what he's doing, and you have forty drones, and you're making twenty roaches. And you're you're unsure of things, so you're. If we look at the economy tab again, you have 35 drones to 44 SCVs, and his income right now is almost double yours in terms of money. When his mules are down, it is double yours. He's coming down with his BCs here. And it it seems weird, right? Because you're like I'm on three bases and he's on two bases, yet he's double my economy. It's because your mineral lines have four drones, ten drones. And 12 out of 8, which is also now not optimally saturated. So you're not, you're definitely not. 
you're focusing too much on what could happen when you should just focus on what is happening, which is just make your fucking larva. Worst case scenario, if you make a shitload of roaches and you read it wrong and you're like, he's got air, counterattack him. Just fucking counterattack his base. And if you have a large army, you will break his base. See, like, right there, uh, your roaches got shoved away by two tanks and a bunker. Obviously, there was a couple widow mines there and some bio behind it. But we're at almost 10 minutes. And like I said before, if you were if you had recovered on drones and you had maxed, and you have 200 supply of roaches, this Terran does not hold that. Right. Like, you would have, like, 60, 70 roaches breaking down his door. And you're going to take some heavy losses at first when those widow mines go sure. off and the tanks shoot you. You'll probably lose, like, 20 out of those 70 roaches, for sure. But you will walk into his base and everything will die. And then suddenly those battle cruisers have to go home. And they're like, oh fuck, we're dead. Go back, boys. Teleport home. We need to save ourselves. Because if he goes for a base trade, all you'd have to do to win at that point is be like, all right, let's just make like fucking eight spores in my main base. Or like ten spores in my main base and just transfer all my drones back to the main. And he's going to have to lift off every building. I'm going to have a fuck ton of spores in my main base and I can make a spire next to it or, or something. And then suddenly I can't lose my base and everything he has is floating. And I win because I'm still mining the game. I'm still mining resources. I just win the game. So it's not always the worst thing if you just make your units because it gives you opportunity to fuck your opponent over, even if it's the wrong units. You're gonna learn that like once you start getting it down a lot more, you're gonna learn that a lot in uh, lower leagues. If, even if you have the wrong shit, you'll win just because you have enough of it. There was a lot of games that went on through the the B to GM series where. I was like, oh god, he went mass voids, and we have max roaches. <laughs> We're okay. Or something like that. But what's happening to you right now is uh, you're getting stuck in this low economy situation where you have been kind of worried about what could happen and you delayed your own economy and did so much to the point to where you um you have been behind the terran for a while now and now you've given the terran time because you've been you've been really worried about not only what he could be doing but what he has as a defense so you were like uh, I don't, like i agree if your roaches went in there they would have died because you don't have enough of them but yeah. you've given the terran the ability to put you in a position where now if you're like, I'm going to make mass drones, he probably could kill you. Because for the last, like, five minutes or six minutes of this game, you didn't utilize what you should have been util utilizing, which is... Matt, you, you had map control at that point. Because you killed the Hellions. The Hellions ideally don't get into your base and kill all your drones, but they did and they died. You once again had map control there. So you don't have to worry that, like, you have to make, like, 30 roaches or 20 roaches about it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I, I don't want to... I know I'm talking... I'm, I'm trying not to talk in ways that's going to make it more complicated. I'm going to just say it one more time to reiterate from the previous uh, game we went over. No matter what the Terran does, if he expands, two base saturation, 12 roaches, uh, and then from there, uh, you, with an overseer scouting into his base, That point at, at that point, you decide, am I going to die right now? Uh, or can I make more drones? And if, you, if you're not going to die, you can make more drones. You don't... Because you got to think about it like this. You don't always have to commit the roaches to their death. Uh, that you make early. Like, you don't have to make 12 roaches. Or, four, or I said 14. You don't have to make 14 roaches. And then walk them over. And no matter what, they just die. You can be like, okay, he's got some stuff to defend himself. Let's not lose them here. And then suddenly you can just have an overseer go into his base and be like... He's going ground, or he's going air. And if you just make drones at that point, um, if it's not something that's immediately going to just walk across the map and kill you, with three base saturation, and you're that at that point, you can just make units all day, and you're fucking fine. And the way to, the way to tell... I'm going to pause really quick, because I don't want to... I want to make sure you're on the same page with me here. The way to tell someone is going to do a, a timing where you should probably keep making roaches... Uh, where it's like, I'm going to die, is if you scout into someone's base with an overseer and you see a bunch of static D, 
like fucking turrets. <laughs> and you see two starports. Right. Um, you, you see what looks like he's not super invested into killing you right away. 100%. I would, the second you see Static D all over the place, you're fine. You can drone your third. Okay. So, so if you're like, I can't get in there, dude. He's got fucking five turrets. <laughs> you could be like, well, he's wasted 500 minerals on five turrets. I can totally saturate my third. Um, but if if you what instead if what you see is is you see like five barracks or you see like uh, like three starports or you see something that looks a lot more just a lot more units and your overseer flies into his army and you're like okay that army is much bigger than my twelve roaches that's a lot of units right now then yeah sure maybe you should uh, really highly consider making more units uh, like a few more units at that point and a great way to a great way to pace yourself this is a big tip for what you can do to make your life a lot easier send like make sure you're on a before I do this make sure on the vision you have it on everyone on the right side it's not specifically on yeah. you or anything okay right there if you leave one roach just leave one roach not inside of his vision of his buildings but just outside of his base just leave it there if that roach is alive and you're like alright I went from 12 roaches which I or I went sorry I keep saying twelve four I went, I had fourteen roaches and I sent one of the fourteen up there to that ping that I just put on the map, and now I made another seven while it was walking across the map and now I have uh, twenty one roaches but twenty of them are on defense. Um, but he's not moving out. You can seriously just fucking drone. You could just if he if he's turtling on two bases like that just drone, and if the faster you do it. Uh, the faster you get it doing this, you'll be able to just pull it off all the time. But if you see that roach get attacked, and you're like, oh, the roach died. Oh, God, he's he's walking to my base. Then, yeah, you should probably go back to making units. And it, it will... It will, it will uh, blah, 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 blah. Jesus, I need some water. <laughs> <laughs> it will reconfirm that he's pushing your base the better your creep is, because he will eventually walk on your creep. So, again, your creep is not bad overall. It, it's above gold, I would say. Uh, this game it's a bit slower, but yeah, you lost a bunch of drones. You you got uh, kind of fucked over early, but uh, the creep is the reconfirming factor here. It's like okay, yep, he's actually pushing me, and that reconfirms to you. All right, I need to uh, keep making units, and I need to kill that. Uh, and then as long as you keep making units, and he's super all in, you'll most likely hold it. So I shouldn't have attacked here because I like panicked. I'm like I don't want him to take a third because I know he's running low. So we're, we're at 13 minutes right now, and this game is already kind of lost for you, I would say. It's really, it's, even yeah. though you're ahead in supply, you're in a really bad position. Um, yeah. About seven minutes ago in this game, or eight minutes ago in this game, uh, basically right after your drones died from the Hellions, you needed to, like, power your drones back up because the Hellions were all dead. And once the Hellions die, there's... It it, it, now it puts a new timer where it's like, the Terran just lost his army. And now he has to make a new one, which gives you time to recover here. And in that recovery time, if you if you take advantage of that and you go, all right, I remade what died. Obviously, it's not supposed to die, but if it does, if you just recover, you have a much higher chance of winning than putting yourself in a position where you're like, ah, oh, shit, my drones died. Let's just make a ton of roaches. And then you're like kind of bobbing around the map being like, I don't know. Like you've already put yourself in such a bad spot because now, again, if we go back to the income tab, uh, you've, you're, you've been trailing the Terran the entire time, basically. And... That's the golden rule of Zerg is uh, for like a standard game when, you, when it's like a macro game is you honestly want to be like one base ahead of your opponent. If you're going to be going for low tech units, which is what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, you're going for Roach Hydra, which is an army that is like it's like a fucking baseball bat army. Like you're going to just slam it into somebody and over and over and over and hope he dies. But it's, it has no like it's there's no like um uh, what's what am I trying to say here? There's no value to it unless it is overwhelming. So if you don't have a good enough economy to make it overwhelm, you're screwed anyways. So you're attacking right now is what's going to happen is is uh, this is now all in for you, and your army is going to thin out really hard here. You might actually break a base because he's under defended and he's out of position. Like look at his. This is a perfect example of his mistakes as well. Look at his main base. And look, the fight's already going on, right? And his main base has a shitload of his army supply just chilling. 
His natural, I don't mind the natural as much. I would love that one other tank to be over there defending his base. But he's got, um, he's got two tanks and, a, and more marines and a bunker and his widow mines. Chilling at the natural and he's got the, the battle cruisers is the big one. Just chilling in the main. These could be helping a lot right now with his army. Sure. Especially before his tanks died and before his bio well died. But he's probably going to fight you with like two halves of his army. He's going to let half his army die and then be like, all right, now let's grab the BCs. <laughs> Which would have been way better if they were all together. So my, my, the biggest point I'm trying to make here is um, putting yourself in a situation like this is not great. But the only reason why it's working is because you're you're playing in a, in a certain area right now where things like this can work. But the higher you go, I would say the percentage of this working goes down further and further and further. Your opponent, the, the higher you get in leagues, the more ready your opponent will be to defend something like this. Especially if um, you've been trailing for the last... A uh, while. And it's at this point, I already know 100%. It's at this point when you're super, as when you're playing this game, you're very uncomfortable because that's what battle cruisers do to you as a player. They make you feel pressured more than, than they really are, basically. Because they have the ability to go everywhere, basically. They can teleport anywhere the fuck they want. So now, if you if you put yourself in a situation where you just don't have enough because you didn't make enough units, and now you're always using what you do have to chase him, you're doing what he wants you to do. But it's it's impossible. Should have stayed at the natural with my like. So it's not. It, I, I don't think that you should have stayed at the natural. I think that it's again, it's a situation that it's you just don't have enough to properly deal with it now. So yeah, now it's too far behind. Yeah, like you're fucked now because. If you don't chase it, your, your bases are going to die. There's nothing you can do about it. And if you go to his natural, he does have enough units to defend himself against what you currently have because you just don't have enough. But yeah. the reason why this is happening is because you've, you've been feeling this feeling even before the BCs were even out because you couldn't get into his base and scout him. Right. But, right. like I said before, you, you, like you, you already saw that he was making a bunch of static D and... That and he also had a starport, and that in itself is already so much information that he's uh, he's investing into defense, which means he's not attacking you, which means it gives you more time to be greedy, and like to like to, greedy up to the point to where you need to be basically, which is three bases versus a two base Terran. That is literally a golden rule of Zerg, like I was saying. Uh, if you fight two base versus two base um, Terran to, to Zerg, you're going to make units around the same rate, and if you're not really micring a lot. Which I highly recommend you don't. Uh, at this right, level, right, right. you're gonna lose almost every fight. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, um, just more eco, and uh, you might lose a couple of games here and there by being like, "Oh my god, I made too many drones, and I thought I was safe, but I'm not." And you can look at those games and really try to break it down as to like why, like why did he attack me and other turns didn't attack me, and maybe, uh, maybe this turn. Um, had uh, like a really late natural and you're like oh shit I didn't notice that this guy's natural was actually like 10% when the other guy's natural was like 80% of the way done when my first overlord scouted either one that that's what makes that that makes more sense now that he he set himself up to do an earlier timing because he delayed his economy and I didn't realize that or something like that Like, you, you will learn it over time, gradually, but just stick to the rule I told you already a couple times, and you're going to win so many games. Because you're, like, in all of these games, there's one common denominator, and it's that you're not getting punished if you would have just droned. You would be fully saturated by, like, 5 minutes and 30 seconds if you just made the drones on your mineral lines. And then if you just started making units then, your supply would explode so much faster than it does. <clears throat> so it's another one of those situations where I feel like it's just like unsure feeling. You're like, he's taking a third. I don't want him to take a third. Uh, screw it. But... 
when you think about it like this, th this is there's two ways to look at this. One way to look at it is you're rolling the dice and you're like, maybe I break him. Maybe I kill this third. Maybe I set him back on two base economy and suddenly I have three base and I'm, I'm okay. Uh, but it's a gamble because he might also defend it and I might lose my entire army. That is, that is legit a fucking gamble right here because your economy is not yeah. great yet. But another way you can look at it, and then what happens after that is, is if your army dies, is you have to replace what just died. So if you look at your production tab, look what's in production right now. You got 13 roaches, you got four hydras. And you're, gonna, you're most likely going to keep making more as well. But another way to look at it that would be even better would be uh, you know you need to get your base saturated, and this guy has three base economy now. So at the bare minimum, we need to match that. Or ideally, it would be great if we had one more economy than he did, like one more base up. This caps out at four bases, by the way. You do not go beyond that, ever. Um, if your opponent has four bases as well, I'm not saying go five base economy and have like 120 drones. That's yeah, a bit yeah, fucking yeah. crazy. But if, if you can, if your opponent's going to be super defensive and be greedy as well now, if they're just going to try and take more bases and stuff, it's in your best interest to drone up to the point where you have like 80. 80, 85. And then... If you, off of like let's say 85 drones you just make mass hydra mass hydra mass hydra mass hydra and you max out on hydras and you're like alright 85 I thought it was like 70 something it is it, it normally is alright it yeah then that's that's the three that's the thing is it's three base but if this game mm -hmm. this game is now and also by the way most of my games in the the lower league bronze GM stuff they usually did yeah, end yeah. way before this this is now getting to the point to where the game is super late and this guy is, uh, this guy already has all of his tech unlocked, basically. And this game is going on 17 minutes here in a second. So, and what that means is, is your main and your natural and your third base, or not really your third, but your main and natural for sure are going to start mining out, if not already mining out altogether. So you're going to want to start taking more of the map. And if you start taking more of the map, uh, you need to start um, spread. Like you're you're going to start spreading yourself out more and more and more. And having the ability to make more to cover that is super important. Um, for now, I don't know how to say this. Yeah, I think I, I felt like I. I'll just okay. For now, I'll say this. I'll, I'll just I'll just say this. This is this is a good way to look at it. Again, this is another right. step a step by step where it'll make it way more uh, approachable. Three base saturation max out if you attack him and he does not die and you're like okay why is he not dead um, what should I do as a, re as a response to this if you can gauge the fight you can be like that fight went okay I should remax again and do it again as long as you make sure if you're if you feel like you're winning fights and you make sure your economy flows where you're like not just having um, 16 drones on what is worth 8 in your main you take another base and you rotate drones over you can stay around 70 and that's fine. Um, but if you if you ever attack a guy and you're like, that fight went fucking awful, and this guy's on three bases. He is not dying. Like, he's not even coming close to dying. This is really shitty. It'd probably be a better... It would be in your best interest at that point to make your focus. Maybe take another base and drone up to, like, 80 so you can get some more gas going. Uh, and then you can also take, like, a hive tech and go into, like, broodlords and actually use something more powerful to break a turtle. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. I do think if you macro properly, though, um, with just like 70, dro 70 drones for now off of like Roach Hydra, you'll win. It. You'll win and get a, you'll get up to like Platinum League with that. And then if you get really good at it, you'll definitely get Diamond with that. Um, so yeah it's again the, the biggest thing of all that we're, we're just going to keep harping on here is it's all it's always in every one of these games it's a macro problem right. yeah i feel like honestly the, re the rest of this game uh i guess we'll keep going because you are behind but you're super fucked already at this point. Oh, yeah. But, 
I'm so gonna... like I, I eventually kill his BCs and then I end up going, I forget, I, I get the spire right around now and I end up going like corruptors. Sure. But then he just wipes me out with uh, bio. I thought another round of BCs was going to come and then he just crushes me with bio. Okay. Um, uh, so do you just like mate only corruptors? Yeah, well, I think I was I was switching to broods. Yeah. But it, it didn't get that far. Okay. Uh, so like his t his timing just like brewed me. Okay. Um, th I would recommend it also. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can go back and watch this and have all that information again and again and again yeah, as many yeah, times yeah. you want. But I might honestly recommend writing this down too if you're not. Uh, there's a couple things I'll say, where it's like it's like a pace. I'll give you some pacing, here. Okay. So, game starts. And you scout and expand. You saturate two bases. You make, off of uh, two bases, you make 14 roaches. You then make one of those roaches go up to his base in the front, like we talked about, and you sit there. And at the same, and also at the same time, you make an overseer scout into his main base. You make drones behind this, unless you think you're getting all in. And if you, what I mean by that is, units are already walking across the map to kill you. So you just make drones again after this. For your third. You fully saturate your third doing this. You make a hydrogen no matter what. With your overseer, when it scouts, if you scout what looks like air, you start going into hydras. If you scout what looks like ground, you do not make hydras until like 160 supply. Like you literally almost max on roaches. And then uh, when you attack him, if you attack something that looks like a massive turtle, like someone who's not going to like die easily, you make an infestation pit immediately. If you attack someone and you do a lot of... Uh, and, and the opposite, though. If you attack someone and you do a lot of damage, you can ma make uh, Roach Hydra all over again. You can just remake that army again and again. And right. keep it... Because you're doing damage, so you're going to kill him eventually. And when I say doing damage, I'm, I'm talking about like... You wipe out an army, or you kill an expansion. But if you attack him and you lose all of your units, you're not doing damage. You're actually bleeding yourself out at that point. Right. Um, so. So you say the infestation pit when? Because usually I grab it you with my den. Make the infestation pit. Den. Make the infestation. Yeah. Uh, that's too early. Um, that's too early. Yeah, because okay. you're making the hydro den when you're like at a hundred supply or like ninety supply. That's way okay. too early. Uh. Because that's like uh, little things like that deviate your gas and stuff like that early game to mm -hmm. slow everything else down. Right. So what should happen is is um, when you uh, you should always go for the attack first, no matter what. You don't need to rush broodlords. Go for the attack. Uh, once you like again, this is off of good saturation, right? This is not off of like forty drones. We're talking like this is off of like almost seventy drones now. Because you you made your roaches early, like the fourteen. And you made drones behind that to not only fully saturate your third base, but you've fixed the gases that are missing in like your main, uh, and and you've already you've also started a fourth base because you've gone back into the drone phase, and you have droned up to seventy to seventy five, like somewhere in there. Like we could just say seventy. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, and then you have gone back into the roach power mode, up to about hundred and sixty supply. You have then decided. Uh, with your overseer scout that has gone either he's going mass air or he's going ground heavy to go either mass roaches or a hybrid of roach hydra um, you attack if you kill nothing or to be honest when you do the attack it doesn't matter if you kill or don't kill when you do the attack the big like you're 160 to 180 whatever the high ass supply and you attack him that's when you yeah. should throw down your infestation pit and then if your attack fails like horribly and you're like oh god Let's make some more Roach Hydra now because I need to make sure I stay alive. But let's start switching into Broodlord. Mm. That is when you go into a hive after the infestation pit's done. And when you start making a hive, that is when you start making a spire. Because a spire and a hive have the exact same build time. And you can start a greater spire the second the hive is done. And then that's when you can, uh, you can max out like one more time if you really feel like you need to. So this is your second max out. And you can use this to defend yourself if he attacks you. Or you can bleed a little bit of your army off. Like, we're not talking about throwing your entire army away. We're talking about maybe yeah. maybe you grab, like, ten roaches. 
and you send them into his natural. Like, you try to run around and go into his natural. Maybe you get lucky. Maybe you kill a tank or kill some SCVs. And, but all your roaches eventually do die. Uh, maybe they do nothing and they all die. It's only 10 roaches, though. But now, suddenly, you have free supply and you make 10 corruptors. Or you can do it with 8 roaches and make 8 corruptors. That's, that's totally fine. And then, and then now your corruptors finish and you're like, okay, well, he's still turtling and I'm maxed again. And this dude is, like, scary as fuck. I'm going to grab 8 more roaches. And I'm going to send eight more roaches to go die. And now suddenly you're no longer maxed again. And now you make all those eight corruptors you just made into eight broodlords. Because one broodlord is worth two roaches in terms of supply. And now you're maxed again, but now you have broodlords. And now suddenly right. he's he's turtling his ass off, but now you have broods pushing across the map. With Hydra and whatever roach you have left defending it. And then now you have a serious scary push that is very formidable at this point in time. And you could very likely kill like an expansion... And stuff like that. Cool. That sh that should be like your overall game plan, and all yeah. behind the behind the scenes during all of this, you you kind of understand the power mode of drones up to three base saturation, like really up to that, like getting that really fast three base saturation, and then you can start like a fourth base, and then slowly get that going. The big thing about your drones though, is while you're doing these attacks, the game is gonna start pacing forward and forward and forward, and before you know it, you're gonna be like five minutes ahead of where you just were. Because you're so focused on, like, I want to make sure my army doesn't die. I, I want to make sure I'm not running into tanks or shit like that. You, want, you, you just want to make sure that you're not oversaturating your middle lines by never expanding and never fixing that. Because that is how you also have money problems later on. So you want to make sure that you're taking, like, even if, even if you're not going to make the drones, just take a fifth base. Because not only is that going to give you larva, if you can afford to take that base, it gives you vision of the map. It gives you an area that the Terran has to kill if you ever counterattacks you in some way. So it gives you some warning to your actual mineral lines. But it also gives you more larvae to work with, and it gives you mineral lines that you can send drones to that are becoming excess. So just uh, expand more, faster, and try to maintain 70 efficient drones. 70 efficient, right. Yeah. So just don't have any, like, because you, uh, just out of curiosity, when you play the game, do you have the numbers above the gas in the hatchery? Like the 16 out of 16, 3 out of 3? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just... If there's any red, fix it. Just do the math and be like, okay, 3 need to go. Let's go over here to a new mineral line. Just always fix it. Right. Um, that should be something you should look at when you're going up to 3 bases, like, all the time. Every time you inject, look at it. But as, once it gets kind of later on in the game, look at it, like, every once... Try to make it a habit to look at it, like, and maybe every 30 seconds or every... like Or every minute. 30 seconds is kind of rid ridiculous. It's really fast. Maybe every minute or two, just look at it. Be like, all right, um, I hear a mineral line, mineral patch depleted, or I should check my base. I'm injecting here. I need to look really fast. Okay, there's red. Fix it. It only takes a few seconds to fix it, but it changes the, it changes so much of the game if you just do that. And then once you get to the phase where you, if it gets to this point where you're like, I made broodlords and roach hydra, you can just keep making this army over and over and over. And the only time I would ever recommend you make corruptor is if this guy has absolutely zero ground units. And you can lose you can literally lose your first army and figure that out. You don't need to yeah. cuz that's that's I think that's your biggest problem is you're hesitating before knowing what he's doing and it's making your army take longer to make when you should just be making what you're going to make no matter what and throwing it at him and whatever he kills it with should be now what you should react to. Because you're going to win yeah, you're going to win 90% of your games with your just first fucking... Ah, take that! Oh, you're dead. <laughs> right. Like, you're going to win so many games like that, for real. If you macro it well. And, uh, yeah, man. Right. Yeah, that's cool, man. Any questions about any of that stuff? So far? I mean, I have a lot of stuff to review. Yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. But if you have anything like on your mind where it's like, but what did you say about this specifically? Like, feel free. Uh, I, d I don't mind. So my infestation and my spire is late then. So I usually grab it just because, just because usually I'm floating too much because I'm probably not spending enough on maxing out. Sure, and that's that's definitely something I think you should work on with injecting. Right. That kind of answers itself. Because you, you could have won all of these games if you had just made more units early. Um, 
Uh, like, there's obviously little things here, like here and there, like the roach worm that misplaced, etc., etc. But if you just spent your money, even though even though you weren't 100% sure what he was doing, if you just made roaches, you would have won every one of these games. Because if he if he makes a ground army and attacks you, you can defend it. If he makes an air army and you're not ready for it, counterattack him. Because if if you have to panic and go, oh god, he's got air, but I'm gonna start making mass hydras now, and in, and I also have spores and a couple queens to work with. Maybe I can make a couple more spores while I make my hydras. Like, it doesn't have to be a lot. It could be, like, maybe three more spores or something like that. Um, but what will happen is, is you might lose a base. And by the time it takes him, in the time it takes him to kill an entire one of your bases, you can evacuate your drones, lose the hatchery, lose the gases, lose the spore, lose the queen. Your hydras that you will have started making will probably almost be done being built now. Because it'll take him probably, like, 20 to 30 seconds to kill a base. Meanwhile, that'll be also enough time for your roaches to have now crossed the map. And you could kill his entire economy if he's fully committed to air. Right. And then now suddenly he has to make a choice where he's like, do I want to turn around and go home? Or do I want to base trade? And if he wants to base trade, if you just make units, guaranteed win. Um, because, you, I, I, you know, if you follow the macro rule, basically, you're more than capable of uh, just having so much more shit than your opponent. Just don't ever be afraid of what he's doing. Like, don't even give a shit of what, what he's doing. Like, try to scout it still, obviously. Because it'd be better if you make Hydras faster if he's going air. But even if you don't know, don't give a shit. Just make your default being like, I'll just make a fuckload of roaches. <laughs> 160 supply of roaches. Let's go. I couldn't see what you're doing. Fuck it. It's so much better than hesitating. But again, this is off of a good economy. Trying to digest everything right now. Oh, 100 dude. Good stuff. It's just. I. Uh, you're you're uh, very valid and justified to uh, feel a bit overwhelmed with the information, which is why 100 percent I post these to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> you're like fuck, dude. You've said a lot of stuff. You've said a lot of stuff. I'm sitting here like nodding my head, yes, sensei. It's all good. <laughs> But there will, there, I would recommend watching it a lot, like, m multiple times, because there will be things that I say right now that you'll, you will, in, a, in one ear, out the other, and you'll, as you get more comfortable with everything, the things that I said that are more elaborate, I guess, or more technical, they'll make way more sense at that point. Yeah, again, this is just a not enough supply situation. Your yeah. army, your army composition is actually so much better than his, but... You were fighting with, like, half the supply. Right. Like, right now, your drones just died, and army supply-wise, you have 60, he has 90. So he's got a bit more than you, it's not quite double. Right. But I'm at 25 drones, and you're just like, that's it. Yeah, for sure. And your drone count's super screwed. Yeah. But if that, if you are if you were to be playing against, like, Bio Medivac, and you just had... This is why I also tell you to go uh, Hydra, because Hydra is way more amovable than Cryptozar. Right, if, you, right, if you just had, like, like let's say, eight Broodlords and, like, 30 Hydras below it, covering them. Oh, you can yeah. amove that army, and the reason why this is so impactful, the reason why it's so important when I say you can just amove it, is because you should not watch that army. That should not be what you're doing. You should be fucking macroing. You should be like, are my bases well saturated? Yep. Right. Are, am I injecting? Yep. Am I am I am expanding enough? Do I have enough? Do I actually have enough drones active on enough bases, or do I have idle drones now? And if the answer is like yeah, it's good, uh, then we're good. And as the shit dies, you can glance at it and be like, all right, fight's going kind of poorly, or it's going great. Just make shit, again. make it again, make another round. And if your opponent does not macro like that, like you are, your your follow up will guaranteed crush the shit out of him. And suddenly, like, the first fight might be, like, let's say you're at 170 supply and Terran's at 160. And you guys trade. And you both lost, in the fight, you both lost about 80 army supply. So now he's down to uh, 80 and you're down to 90. But during that fight, let's say he only, re like, kind of, oh, he macroed yeah. like shit and he only merely made, like, 20 supply during the fight. He didn't really macro at all. Made, like, maybe 10, 10, 10 to 20. So now he's around 100. But during the fight, you didn't micro really at all. You just kind of A-moved it. You were like, ah, eh, it's fucking good. We're good. And you're like, I'm just going to remake my army again. Off of all the uh, larvae I have right now and all the money I have and my injects. It's because it's all I've really been focusing on. 
And now your, your army supply, uh, instead of being at like 90, now it's back up to like 160 or 180. Somewhere up there again. It's super high. And you're like, let's hit him again. And instead of having like a 10 supply difference in the, uh, like you had in the first fight, now your second fight has like a 40 or a 50 supply difference when you hit him because you actually macroed during the fight, not after the fight, which is precious amounts of time that you had that you like utilized that he didn't because he was just staring at it being like, shit's dying. <laughs> Who's winning? So, uh, yeah, just I would say have that mindset when you play and it's going to go so much better, dude, for you. Cool, man. This is awesome. Oh, all right. Well, good stuff. I need to drink some water. <laughs> I didn't really yeah. drink any water. Right <laughs> but uh, good shit, man. Thank you for uh, getting a coaching lesson. And uh, let me know how it yeah, goes man. in the days ahead, dude. Yeah, I will. And if you want me to pick my brain about that realtor stuff, you know, happy to help you yep. too. Sounds good, dude. All right, man. All right. Have a, have a good rest of your night, man. And uh, good luck. All right. All right. Later, dude.